You would not believe me if I told you the day I had. I had a flight from Memphis that ended up getting rerouted, ended up in Little Rock, Arkansas, had to wait there for over six hours before finally making over to Nashville. Then from Nashville, a 40 minute drive to Franklin, Kentucky, and I made it to Triple Barrel Social. Triple Barrel Social Club, <laughs> Franklin, Kentucky, Poker Face Hash, Rick goes all in. Slowpoke was here yesterday. Let's go. So we have a huge day today, tournament, cash game, super excited to be here. Brand new poker room opening with my friends Kyle Fischel, Slow Poker, and Greg goes all in. Well, if you didn't get the memo by now, I am at a brand new poker club in Franklin, Kentucky, Triple Barrel Social. So stoked to be here with Adam Rude, Matt Vaughn, Greg goes all in, Kyle Fischel, and a special guest appearance by Slow Poker. Make sure you check them all out on YouTube. It's time to get started in this meetup game. We had three tables running and the action was already heating up. I was a little late because of my airport situation, but I sat down with $1,000 and we we're playing 2-5. Let's get into some hands. And if you live in the Nashville area or near Franklin, Kentucky, you guys have got to check out this card room. It's run by respected people in the poker community. You know you're going to get a great experience walking in these doors, greeted by friendly staff. It's so fun to be here at the grand opening and I know this card room is going to be the place to play. With great cash games running every day and lots of tournament action, you guys gotta check it out. We don't wait too long before picking up a very playable hand in the low jack, we look down at ace-king offsuit. I raise to $20. It folds around to the cutoff and he wants to play for more chips, he puts in the 3-bet to 65 which is a completely reasonable raise size. It folds back around me and I think all options are on the table here except folding of course. Normally with my offsuit ace-king varieties, I like to put in the 4-bet especially being out of position. If we're suited, flatting seems fine too. I don't know anything about my opponent as I just sat down. Most players at these stakes really don't have a robust 3-betting range, it's mostly going to be a lot of premium hand. So for those reasons, let's flat, keep ranges a bit wide, and see a flop. So we go heads up to a flop of 3-5-6 with 2 clubs, and this flop is absolutely terrible for our hand. I check it over to him, he puts in a bet of $95, so a bit on the larger side, which he should be doing on these types of board textures. Of course, there's nothing to do here except put in a fold and live to see another hand. In this hand, I look down at 8-6 of spades under the gun 1 and I raise to $15. Next act puts in the 3 bet and makes it $45. It folds back around to me in a vacuum and in theory this hand is just a fold being out of position in the spot, however I did not come all the way to Franklin, Kentucky to fold a suited ace. I make the call and we're gonna go heads up to a flop of ace 4-4 four, four with 2 hearts. I check it over to him and he puts in about a half pot bet of $45. Obviously nothing else to do here other than make the call as if we raise we only get get called by hands that have a lot of equity or have us crushed. And if he's 3-betting with hands like King-Queen suited, Queen-Jack suited, Jack-10 suited, and all of his smaller pocket pairs, we want to keep all of those hands in and give him room to bluff on later streets. We're headed to a turn card, which is the 3 of spades. I check it over to him and he checks behind. At this point, we have to think our hand is likely the best hand, so we head to a river card. The river is a 9 of clubs, and now if he has a hand with no showdown value, he's going to have to put in a bluff on the river. Our kicker doesn't play. I think we have a really great bluff catch in this spot, especially being out of position. If we bet, we fold out all of his junk hands. It's possible he can have a hand like tens or jacks, for example, but I think even those go for some value on the river given the action. So I check it over, hoping he'll put in a bluff. My opponent thinks about it for a little bit, and then he decides to check and said, I almost put in a bluff. I flip over my hand, and it's good. I think a6 in that spot is a pretty great bluff catcher, especially being out of position. In this hand, we're a bit short-handed and I'm under the gun and look down at Jack-10 offsuit. This is probably the stone bottom of my opening range in this spot, but the table was playing a bit tight so I thought it was okay. I make it $15 and it folds all the way around to the big blind. He puts in the call and then we head to a flop of Ace-9-5 Rainbow. He checks it over to me and on this super dry, static ace high board, we can bet pretty small so I make it $15. He makes the call and the turn is the queen of hearts. He checks it over to me. Now we still have range advantage. It's really hard for my opponent to have any nutted hands at this point, except for if he flopped two pair or a set. This turn card is really great for us. We have jack high, we pick up equity on the turn, we have range advantage and I think this is a great spot to put in an over bet and start to get my opponent to fold out all of his 9x or 5x. He might even possibly start folding hands like, for example, ace deuce or ace three offsuit. He's never gonna love this bet, knowing that there's a chance I'll fire again on the river. So having jack high, picking up equity on the turn, I think it's a great spot to put in the over bet, so I make it $75. My opponent doesn't think very long before putting in the fold, and our over bet with jack high gets the job done. 
this hand, we get ourselves into a little bit of a pickle when there's an under the gun raise to $15. It folds all the way around to me in the big blind, and I look down at jack six of clubs. Not the best hand in the world, however, the player under the gun was opening and raising a lot of hands, so I think we have enough equity here to make the call. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop of jack, 10, three with one club. So we flop ourselves top pair in a backdoor flush draw. I check and my opponent checks behind. The turn is the queen of clubs, which seemingly looks like a good card. However, it is not the greatest as it completes a lot of pairs for my opponent. For example, if he had a hand like king queen that checks back, queen nine that checks back, a hand like ace queen that wants to check and see a turn card, or even ace king now has the stone nuts. But obviously we're not going anywhere with our pair and our flush draw. I check it over to my opponent and he bets $15. We're gonna make the call for this price and we head to a River card, which is the four of hearts. I check it over to my opponent yet again, and now he puts out a chunky bet of $75. Since we bricked out our flush draw, we have to think what types of bluffs my opponent has in this spot. At this point, I can't think of many intuitive bluffs. He never does this with a hand like ace-10 because he has showdown value. Another issue is that we hold jack-six of clubs in our hand, making it less likely that our opponent was semi-bluffing on the turn with the clubs, for example, like a hand like ace-six of clubs. This is a great bet for my opponent. It's very polarizing. He's telling me he has absolutely nothing or he has a very strong made hand. I just can't think of enough intuitive bluffs my opponent would have in this spot, so I let it go, and then my opponent says this. I'll show the vlog, but not then. Oh my god! So my opponent did indeed turn the stone nuts with Ace King offsuit, and we put in the good fold and save ourselves $75 on the river. In this hand, we make some player dependent decisions as the cutoff raises to $15. I'm in the big blind with ace four off. I'm gonna defend and we're gonna go heads up to a flop of ace queen eight with two hearts. I check it over to my opponent and he bets $20. Let's talk a little bit about my opponent. He has been very, very tight, not opening a ton of hands and just folding a lot post flop. So knowing this, I know my opponent probably has a pretty strong hand, even continuation betting here, given his player type, extremely tight and passive. So when tight and passive players are putting money into the pot, alarm bells should be going off in your mind, but it would be way too exploitative for me to fold the flop just yet. Plus if we hit a four, we can possibly stack a hand like ace king. So I'm gonna call and see a turn card. The turn is a small card, however, it's the three of clubs, so we do not improve. I check it over to my opponent yet again, and now he puts in a bet of $35. Against most players, it would seem super nitty to fold an ace in this spot. However, against this opponent, he's just most likely, more often than not, going to have a hand that has me beat. So I put in the fold and then for the vlog, my opponent shows ace jack off suit. So he did indeed raise with a decent hand, bet the flop when he smashes it and continues on the turn. We're dodging bullets over here at triple barrel social and we're gonna live to see another hand. In this hand, a very competent player in the cutoff raises to $20. I look down at nine seven of clubs on the button. I'm gonna peel, the big blind comes along as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of king, three, five, two clubs. So we flop ourselves the nine high flush draw. Checks over to the cutoff and he bets $35. I think there's some merit to raising here given that we have one of our weakest flush draws. However, we do have the button. So I think it's totally fine to put in the call. The big blind folds. So we're gonna go heads up to a turn card, which is the ace of clubs. So now we have a flush. Now our opponent checks. I think our opponent can have some ace x combinations here. He's not going to continue betting when the flush comes in, but I think we can still get value from a lot of hands, possibly even a hand like king queen, etc. Having the nine high flush, we also have to protect against better clubs that my opponent can have, like for example if he has the queen of clubs in his hand. So I put out a bet of $75. My opponent hems and haws says that the ace of clubs was the absolute nut low turn card for him and then he flips over and folds king 10 of diamonds. So a little bit unfortunate that we weren't able to get a little bit more value, however lucky we made the flush and we win the pot. In this hand, something very interesting happens. There's actually a misdeal and the dealer didn't catch it till there was already too much action. So I look down at aces and I'm hoping that this hand plays out. Sure enough, the dealer confirms with the floor that there's been too much action, so the hand will play on. 
Under the gun raises to $15 and it folds all the way around to me in the big blind and I have aces. This hand is already super weird. I don't want this guy to fold. Normally I would make it a polarized size, like at least $75, but I go for 50 and the good news is he calls. So we are going heads up to a flop of ace four five. So we flop top set. I think we can bet really small here or check. So I elect to check. And then my opponent gives me some good news. He bets $75. I call him the turn is another four. So now we have top full house. I check yet again, it would be disastrous for me to put in a bet and have my opponent fold given that we have the nuts, except for if my opponent has pocket fours, of course. Either my opponent has a strong hand, a strong draw, like a flush draw, or he somehow has the case ace in his hand, but either way, my opponent puts out a bet of $110. Again, if my opponent folds, it would be disastrous, so I make the call. The river is a five, so now the board is double paired. This is actually a pretty bad action killing card, however, would be great if my opponent it had somehow some way a four or a five now at this point i can't check and run the risk of my opponent checking back pretty much all of his value hands and a lot of his bluffs will shut down on this river as well so i put out a bet of 150 dollars my opponent thinks for a little bit hems and haws and then finally tosses in his cards he said he had pocket jacks so given the fact that we totally had that board locked up on the flop and the turn, I think we got a decent amount of value out of our hand, especially given that this hand shouldn't have played out given it was a misdeal. So now to start this hand, we are up about $130 on the session. It folds around to me on the button and I look down at the beautiful 6-5 of spades. I raise it up to $20. The player to my left, his name's Malcolm. He was such a nice guy and so fun to play with. He raises it up to $50. It folds back around to me and I don't think there's anything to do here other than make the call, especially the price my opponent is giving me. So I called $50 and we go heads up to a flop and I apologize you guys, I totally forgot to take notes on this hand and I cannot remember for the life of me what the board was, but I think it was something like 10-3-3 with two diamonds. My opponent is out of position and starts with a check. And I've said this a lot on the vlog, just because my opponent checks does not mean he doesn't still retain some nutted hands in his range. So with our exact hand, six high, with no backdoor equity, we are going to put in the check. We head to a turn card, which is the four of diamonds. So now the diamond flush comes in. The board is paired, but it does give us an open ender. My opponent now leads for $65. I suppose I get a little ambitious in this spot because I thought I could have all the 10X, all the 3X, and all the flush. We have six high, but we do pick up some equity. And so I thought it might have been a decent time to put in a raise and try to take control of this pot and take it down with our six high. However, remember what I said on the flop about my opponent still having nutted hands in his range? Well, yeah, I didn't quite listen to myself on the turn and I make it $200. My opponent then almost snap jams all in. Oh boy, what did we get ourselves into? My opponent then flips over ace king of diamonds. His jam on the turn got me to fold all of my air and all of my second best type hands, but it was a very nice check on the flop, keeping me in there, allowing me to pick up some equity on the turn and torch about $300 in this hand. In this hand, it folds all the way around to me and I look down at the beautiful queen jack of diamonds in the hijack, I raise it up to $15. Only the button calls, so we're gonna go heads up to a flop of 854 rainbow. I'm not sure if my queen high should start bluffing on this board texture. We don't have backdoor diamonds and not a ton of backdoor equity. So I decide to put in the check, planning to give up if my opponent bets as this flop can smash him a lot of the time calling on the button. But my opponent does check, so we're headed to a turn card. The turn is the king of hearts. And now I think this is a good time to start betting. We can probably get this through and get him to fold a lot of smaller pocket pairs, smaller pairs that might've checked the flop, as well as hands that have us beat like all the asex combinations that aren't paired. And this king is going to hit our range a little bit more often than his, so I bet $20. He puts in the call, so we head it to a river, which is an offsuit 9. Now that I bet the turn, I've showed up at the river with one of my worst showdown value type hands because we have queen high. So I've got to go for it here and I put out a bet of $55 hoping that my opponent folds. Luckily, my opponent does think for a little bit and then puts in the fold and shows the ace five offsuit. So a perfect example of how we can bet the turn and the river and get hands with marginal showdown value to put in folds when we would have otherwise lost with our queen high. 
In this hand, stacks are about 700 effective. There's a player who's an older gentleman who had barely opened any hands at all the entire night. He was playing very, very tight. He opens the cutoff to $15. I look down at ace-queen offsuit in the small blind, and I think there's merit to this hand either flatting or three betting, but in this case, knowing I can probably get my opponent to fold a lot of hands post-flop, I decide to raise to $65. It folds back over to him. He doesn't think very long before ripping all in for $700. Not gonna speculate and make the call here with my ace queen offsuit. I'm not even sure my ace king offsuits would make the call in this spot. I think in hindsight, I would prefer to put in a call here and try to flop a really strong hand because I perceive my opponent to have a very strong hand. I should have elected to realize my equity instead of going for the higher variance route because my opponent does put in the four bet jam. We are forced to fold. We don't get to see the flop. My opponent doesn't show, but we're gonna move on to the next one. In this hand, I raise under the gun 1 to $15 with pocket 10s. Middle position and the big blind call, so we're going 3 ways to a flop of king, 6, king. They check it over to me, and on this type of static, paired board type texture, being the preflop raiser, facing multiple opponents, we don't need to bet big here. So I make it $15. Only the player in middle position calls, so we're headed to a turn card, which is an ace. This isn't the best card in the world, as a lot of the non-paired hands my opponent's gonna float the flop with are gonna consist of a lot of ace highs. So I put in the check and wait to see what my opponent does, and he bets $30. We're not going to fold just one bet just yet, so I put in the call. The river is a complete blank. I check, and then luckily my opponent checks, so I'm very happy to get the showdown, and he shows ace six of diamonds, so a little bit unlucky that my opponent hits the ace on the turn. If my opponent puts in another bet on the river, I'm probably finding the fold, especially against this player. This hand still stinks a little bit. I look down at pocket nines under the gun and I raise to $15. I pick up four callers, so we go five ways to a flop of bingo, ace, nine, five, rainbow. I check and then another player in early position puts out a bet of $30. So let's talk about my check really quick. I actually really hate this check. I think I should be betting here because I unblock all of my opponent's ace-x combinations. So if I put in a bet here, I could actually face a raise from a hand like ace-5 suited, for example, or ace-jack suited, ace-10, etc. The reason I don't like my check is because my plan was to check raise, and by check raising, I'm really forcing my opponent to continue with a narrowed range instead of continuing with hands that I have absolutely crushed. So I raise it to $75. My opponent thinks for a little bit, but then finally turns over ace-10 offsuit and puts in the fold, and it's so tragic because if I just would have bet, I probably could have got two, maybe three streets of value out of my opponent, but instead I forced him to fold a hand that I had absolutely crushed, and, and I absolutely hate the way I played this hand. It's very hard for my opponent to have a strong hand. For example, he really shouldn't even have ace-king or ace-queen because even those hands three bet pre-flop. So lesson learned, and we're gonna move on to the next one. After that hand, things were winding down. I won a few small pots, one with pocket threes and another one with nine ten of hearts before finally playing this hand. There was a limp on the button and I looked down at queen jack of hearts in the small blind and I raise it up to $25. The button calls, so we're gonna go heads up to a flop of queen eight eight. I bet $15, my opponent folds, and that's gonna wrap up our first ever poker session at Triple Barrel Social. So after that hand, it was about 3 in the morning and time to rack up. I was in the game for $1,000 and cashed out with 613 for a loss of about $400. The next day, I had an early flight to catch, so I was super bummed I wasn't able to participate in the tournament, but it looked great, so make sure you guys check the tournaments at Triple Barrel Social. I only got to play a few hands before it was time to head out, but I had an amazing time. Thank you so much to everyone at Triple Barrel Social for hosting such a great grand opening. If you guys enjoyed the vlog, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world. We're just getting started. It's only up from here, and I'll see you guys next time.